Welcome to Megger's technical support video. In this video we will discuss RTMS click on the fault impedance feature. Let's begin. To get to click on the fault impedance, we'll go to select new test, come down to the impedance area and select the middle icon. What popped up was a list of all the different relay manufacturer uh, characteristics that are embedded into the RTMS software. For this purpose you will see uh, all the different ones. I will not go into all of them. Uh, I will show you that you can also put in a generic MO or a half circle or generic quad which can be any relay in the IEEE quad function as well. So, Okay for this purposes we will use the SEL and I have connected is a SCL321 relay. This is our impedance setting screen. You will notice that there's a couple pieces of information that we do need so that way it can allow our test to function properly and plot the points uh, that we are wanting to test. The impedance uh, ohmic value also along with its uh, angle come down here to our tolerance level. Tolerance levels can be uh, changed per manufacturer specifications. Uh, these can also be, these are always changed by uh, the user so we can actually add a tolerance or we can compare between two tolerances with the impedance or 5% looks good here if we want it uh, a plus or minus uh, uh, an extra impedance. Also you notice down here that we also have the different zones so by selecting the zone button we can get up to six zones for this particular style of relay. Some other relays have more. So for zone one we will also pick uh, which style of test we want to run. So we can go line to ground, line to line, or three phase. Here you'll notice that we have the line to line function highlighted. Uh, it, which is our normal test that we do for uh, zone impedance elements. We'll come over and make sure that the direction is either forward or reverse or if that zone is actually turned off. And then we also have to have the time. So each zone has its own particular time. Now with zone 1 usually it's no inherent time delay so usually that's necessary. Uh, for zone 2 You'll notice we'll go to zone 2 and it'll have a 400 millisecond uh, time, but this is a default setting that's inside RTMS. So what we would need to do here is actually input uh, settings that are from the SEL template. So we can come up here to import settings. We can come down to the setting file that I had created using the SEL software. Uh, to get it into a text file. So we have to make sure that we export these to a text file, .txt. So I'll select set. That's the file I want to input and you'll notice that it is also put in my zone 1 and 2 uh, parameters here. Here's zone 1. Showing you the parameters here for zone 1 that I've changed. And also for zone 3 because this particular relay has a zone 3 set. Now that we have the settings input into the test program we can also verify this by having the zone 1 which has no inherent time delay per the settings that I have and then also you have the uh, 2.8 ohm at 83.3 which was our uh, setting that's in our current relay at the moment so what we can do now is we will come down to hit the, the green check mark this is going to allow us a few more other pieces of information about how we want to proceed with this test. Um, you have your pre-fault values here. So our voltage will start out at 69 volts. You can define this wherever you would like. I usually try to keep it at the line to line of 120. So I've changed this pre-fault voltage here. Uh, it will have no current. And we'll also uh, keep it on for two seconds before we'll actually initiate the fault on the test. Uh, constant current, you have different options, constant voltage or constant current, constant source. And you can also do 
the uh, constant source using the plot. I usually keep it at current and around 5 amps is good for here. Now the different style of tests. So each style of test here you can perform a shot test which actually gives you an opportunity to select points in the zone and out of the zone. It's pretty much a go no go test. We can pulse ramp where we would actually take a pulse ramp fashion and move it uh, into the zone from outside of the zone. Or we can do a binary search and allow it to pulse in the zone, out of the zone, in the zone, out of the zone to fine tune where that uh, point is, where it operates and doesn't operate. And then also some type of pre-fault cycles uh, will be applied as well uh, during this test. We have the option to view this information with CT uh, ratios inputted for primary or secondary. For this place we're doing secondary. For face-to-face -face displacement is the 180 degrees apart from the two phases that were chosen, whether it be A to B fault, B to C fault, or C to A fault. Okay, now you view over here you will see the zone timers. And this came from the information from the settings that I did import into the test. You will notice that it has for or zone one, it has zero, so there is no inherent time delay here. But we're actually going to pulse this to the fault uh, for a little bit over zero because you have to have some time. Uh, you can not just turn on the test. Uh, zone two, you will notice there's a 20 cycle delay here. We will pulse that fault for a little bit past uh, the zone two timer but also it'll stay within the zone three timer. So that way it'll allow our relay to notice if the fault is within our zone or within the next zones. And then we're doing the same thing here for our zone three. You also see that the zone three setting is 100 cycles and we are pulsing that fault for a little bit over the 100 cycles to 130. And we do the same for line to line and for the three phase fault as well. Now I'm going to hit okay. This is the impedance click on the fault screen. So in this screen, this allows us a lot of uh, flexibility in what we want to do. Do we want to perform a shot inside the zone, outside the zone? Do we want to uh, ramp through the zone? And since we picked the pulse ramp, uh, you'll notice a little circle. So the circle for the first zone will actually be yellow. And then you'll have uh, two red lines, one up on the outside and inside, those being our tolerance. So when it's selected yellow, that means that is the, mo the active zone that we have here that is activated. So we're going to click one point out of the area, click one point into the area, and we're just going to make a few points here. Now that we can come in for zone two, we can also see that zone two is here. Uh, with the green circle, we can click a couple points outside of that as well. And then also we want to test in the zone 3 area, uh, preferably pretty close to our uh, maximum torque, which is the uh, Z1 Ang. So now that I have two points inside of zone A, or zone 1, uh, two points into zone 2 or zone 3, now you notice that these have populated uh, on our table next to us, and then they signify what zones they were actually uh, plotted in. They were in zone one, in zone two, and zone three. So I have six tests here. And now what we'll do is we'll allow what type of fault that we would like to create. So we need to see what types of faults are available. Selecting the different fault type button allows us different fault types that we can select during this test. So we can actually choose a three phase fault, phase to phase fault, and then also phase to ground. Well, since I selected some points and I was already going to do my face-to-face -face values, I went ahead and selected the A to B. So you'll let it let you know here that we're on A to B fault. Um, you'll notice this icon here. It shows uh, to cancel out results. If I already had some test results populated here, it would clear those test results out and allow me to continue on or just retest because sometimes some things need a little adjustment. We also have uh, clear the test lines. If there's a test line that I do not care for uh, to test in this particular instance, I can clear either that current fault type or I can clear them all. This allows us to change the search mode in how the test is going to be performed. This is a standard, just a basic test. 
we can also select the IEC standard method and the or we can choose uh, how we're going to search this through the origin which will actually come into all the zones and come down to the zero line I need to configure a binary input so if I come to the binary input I will select inputs and now I have the option to decide which input I'm going to use so whichever one I have wired up to my test set so I have number one is it a dry contact or a normally wetted contact or do I have an uh, action that's going to be normally open or normally closed? Since we're coming out of the zone into the zone, we can do a normally open to closed action. And then we can select the check mark. Now we have our binary input configured. And now we can perform the test. So we will hit the run all option and we will run through all of the tests. After the test has been executed, you will see the phaser diagram with the applied fault values on the left side of the screen. Then on the right side, you will see the points you selected on the impedance graph update as the test progresses. When the test has completed, you will click on the view report icon. Then you will see the results which are populated in the table. All of the test parameters and graphical points will be displayed here. This concludes our video and thanks for watching.